Namaskaram Sadhguru you have said that if somebody is really willing you are available to them beyond their logic so if anybody in this room is really willing can you read their mind or say i am in shimla and thinking about you and really willing that yes please initiate me or guide me will you know about it so can i read your mind i don't waste my time reading people's mind because it's <laughs> uh, I don't read even my mind because it's a trash bin. Because what is in your mind? Do you have a choice what is in your mind? From your childhood, whatever you're exposed to, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, everything is in your mind, isn't it? Your mind is society's garbage bin. You have no choice. If this person speaks, I will take it. If this person speaks, I will not take it. Do you have such a choice? If I abuse you, you will remember it much more than if I say nice things to you. Yes or no? Hello? So, it is a trash can, it gets everything. You can choose what to use and what not to use. That choice you have, if you are not in a reactive state, but you have no choice about what is in your mind, isn't it? Just everything that you've been exposed to is there in your mind. People who are busy spreading lies in the world talk about a pure mind. How can trash can be pure? How can a garbage bin be pure? If you remove half the brain, pure mind. Otherwise, everything that you gathered is there. The choice of what to use and what not to use, that is your choice. Hello? That differentiate you from each other. One person chooses the right things, another person randomly chooses whatever. So accordingly your personalities get determined. But do you really have a choice what to contain in your mind? All the filth in the world is there in the mind, isn't it? You have no choice about what to hold in your mind. If you think I should not hold this, only that will stay. Right now as an experiment, all of you, just close your eyes, ten seconds, you should not think about a monkey, okay? No monkeys for ten seconds. Hmm? Only monkeys, isn't it? So I'm saying you don't have a choice. Everything that's good and bad and nonsense, everything that's come your way is in your mind. You cannot choose. You cannot choose what to hold. You can only choose what to use. That choice also many people have lost. So don't talk about reading your mind. I don't want to walk through all that filth. Hello? I don't even go through my mind. <laughs> Forget about yours. But. The basic question is something else, it's just I picked on something on the side. I must tell you this, I have initiated more people in the world whom I have never met than people that I have met. I have met a few million people, but I have initiated many, many times more people who have never met. They have never seen me, they have never know anything about me, just if they were in a moment of absolute willingness, we won't miss the chance. So, what absolute willingness means is, you are conscious and you have no will of your own, you are simply here. If you lay… if you are like that in Shimla, tch, doesn't matter. You are Shimla or North Pole, it doesn't matter because consciousness has no distance. You are talking about being in the same room, this is only the problem of the body. Your body is there, my body is here. It's very clear, this is my body, that's your body. This is my mind, that's your mind, clear. Here and there it may overlap, we may agree a little bit. But this is my mind, that's your mind. Never have you found another person whose mind is exactly like yours, have you? So you thought when you were in love, but the moment you got married, you realized they have their own mind. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> No, you're a young girl, you don't know probably, it will happen. <laughs> so this is my mind, this is my body, that is your body, that is your mind. These things are right now, at least for now, distinctly separate. 
but I want you to understand, there is no such thing as my life and your life. You hold a little bit of the same thing, I hold a little bit of the same thing. It's like in Simla, you grew up in Simla? In Simla, do you blow soap bubbles when you were in school or something? You did. Suppose you and me, today we have a soap bubble competition. You and me going to blow soap bubbles. My bubble is this big, yours is this much. So I say, see, look at this, this big bubble is my bubble. Oh, it went. Then I don't say this is my air, that is your air. When the bubble is holding, this is my bubble, that's your bubble. Just like that. This is my body, that's your body. Right now. The moment it breaks, there is no such thing as my life and your life. It's one life. So, will you experience this or will you believe the nonsense that I'm speaking? This is the only question. If you experience it, after that, I don't have to tell you, be nice to the person who is sitting next to you, don't rob them, don't kill them, don't do this, don't do that, would you need it? Did anybody tell you this little finger is a helpless little finger, don't cut it, don't chop it, don't hammer it? Did anybody tell you? Why you're taking care of it? Because you experience this as a part of myself. If you experience all life as part of myself, then nothing would be needed, everywhere it's connected. So I'm saying in Simla or wherever you want, if you simply sit there, not as a man, not as a woman, not as a person, just as life. We are always waiting. You must do some inner engineering. There's a program called inner engineering. We can do one thing, only if you're committed, because we don't want to offer this to people who don't value this, because this is a tremendous tool. Millions of lives have been transformed with this. There is a seven-day online session. In all languages it's there, in English it's in my voice, in other languages it's dubbed. Simple seven steps that you take to undo your mind. Then there is a simple practice which has to be done more directly, which is called a Shambhavi Mahamudra. What it does is to you, if you sit here, your body is here, your mind is there, what is you is little away from these two things. Is it true that you gathered this body over a period of time? Hello? You gathered it. Is it true you also gathered the content of your mind? Yes. What you gather can be yours, can never ever be you, isn't it? Suddenly if I pick up this vessel and say, this is my vessel, you will think, Sadhguru has some problem, but everybody says he is wise, let us listen some more. After some time I will say, this is me, then you'll say, let's go. The moment I say, this is me, you know this is a case. But this is happening to you every day. Food comes in front in your plate, you say, this is my food, you eat it, and then you say, this is me. It's a case, isn't it? Hello? Hello? Case or no? The moment you believe what is not you as yourself, then you are on the pitch of madness. Your only comfort right now is, everybody is like this only. That's how it is in a madhouse. Only a doctor is crazy in the mental asylum, you know. Others are all normal only. Yes. I am saying, suppose, you, you take these two fingers and start poking your eyeballs, we would think there is some ailment, isn't it? Hello? Yes or no? If you start hurting yourself. Every day, you take the sharpness of your mind and keep poking yourself. Is there an ailment or no? That's all. If you are causing any suffering to yourself, that is the case. 
But everybody is like that only, that is the advantage right now, that is a cover-up. Everybody being like that doesn't make it normal, hello? No, I don't think that's normal. So if you are normal life, even for one moment, we'll get you in Shimla. And what is that? 99999. <laughs> what is the <laughs> frequency? No, without that frequency, we'll get you on the hundred. Thank you, thank you very much.